Chapter 1, Conscious Human Action, poses the question of freedom. Are we free in thought and action, or compelled by lawful necessity? In the previous video, we discussed the four elements of will, action, agent or I, the nature or character of the agent, and the motive. Each topic in Chapter 1 views the question of freedom from a particular domain of existence, depending on which elements of an act of will are emphasized. The first topic locates free will within the domain of action. Within the domain of action, we are presented with a choice between several possible actions. We have a choice between possible action A or possible action B. The will is free to choose action A or B. In this domain, freedom is located in making an indifferent choice between two actions entirely at will. The indifference releases the will, so the choice is made entirely at will. In the diagram, the I, nature, and motives are colored gray to indicate the indifference of the agent. A willful choice is experienced when we are immersed in action as in athletics or a busy day willfully acting and reacting to life situations. An athlete needs to allow the will to act and react without hesitation. Everything is happening on the field of action. The agent remains indifferent while the choices occur immediately out of the will in response to the outer circumstances. Scientific research refutes the freedom of indifferent choice by discovering that a reason always exists that determines why a person carries out one action from among several possibilities. Basic science recognizes the law of cause and effect in the domain of action. The will is not free because the will is always determined by some kind of reason. Even though the agent may not be aware of it, a reason exists for every action. To overcome the unfreedom of an indifferent choice, we move to the domain of the agent or I. In this domain, the I is not indifferent. The I has its own preferred choices and wants. He chooses as he pleases. Freedom is located in the free choice of the I. The opponents of freedom ask us to analyze our consciousness. What we find is that our choice is always determined by a desire. If we think about our conscious experience in the domain of the I, we will recognize that when we are given a choice, we choose the thing that we want. If our choice is determined by our desire, then freedom is refuted, because we are not free in our desire. We are not free to desire or not desire as we please. Now let's move to the domain of the agent's nature. We are unfree in our desiring, but our desiring is an expression of our nature. One's nature consists of the dispositions and characteristics of a person that includes their typical ways of thinking, feeling, and acting. We all have the desire to express our real self. We must be allowed the freedom to express our real self, free to express who we really are. In this domain, freedom is not located in free decision, but in the freedom of necessity to express ourselves. This freedom is opposed by the fact that our nature is determined by external causes to exist and to act in a fixed and exact way. Our nature is a result of our upbringing and outside social influences. We are a product of our environment. When faced with a life situation, we react in the way dictated by our social conditioning. We free ourselves from being controlled by external causes by developing character. In the domain of motive, we see that an idea is turned into a motive for action only when one's character is such that the idea arouses a desire to act. When our friends suggest an idea for action, such as drinking alcohol or going to a movie, that idea is turned into a motive only if the idea is approved by our character. Then we are not determined by external causes but rather from within. We free ourselves from external motivation by being self-motivated from within. This freedom is refuted by pointing out that we are being determined by the necessity of our established character. Our character has set the grounds 
for what we can and cannot do, so our freedom is an illusion. In all of these views, something very important is not being taken into consideration. And that is the difference between motives that I allow to influence me only after I have consciously made them my own, and others I follow without a clear knowledge of them. There is a profound difference between knowing and not knowing why I act. In the next video, we will examine this question.